Good morning and welcome to our January Soap Fun presentation. We are so happy to have you with us today. My name is Carrie. I'm with Quality Sewing and Vacuum. We have 11 stores in Washington State and we have our online presence at qualitysewing.com and we are super excited to have you with us for So Fun today. So before we get started, wanted to let you know that all of the products that um, Donna and Naomi will be talking about today are available on our website already at the 20% off SoFun discount, but they're only going to be available online through Friday, February 4th. So if you see something today you like, you might want to go online and snatch it up before it's gone. The other thing is there will be two door prizes. So if they call your name and you're one of the lucky winners, make sure that you send us a private message on Facebook and we will get that prize sent out to you. The final thing that we want to let you know is if you are not a member of our first dibs group and you're here and you obviously like sewing and you like savings on sewing products, make sure you join our first dibs group. It is on Facebook and what it is is exactly as the title implies. We find special deals in the, our warehouse, things that we ordered too much of or we didn't realize we had still and they were hiding somewhere. and we take those items and discount them and sell them in the first dibs group first. So if you like sewing savings, make sure that after so fun, you don't want to miss any of the January presentation, but after so fun, you find our first dibs group and you join us for special savings. If you enjoy the presentation today, make sure you look every single month. We have a Facebook live for our so fun. And the next time we'll be live will be in February. It will be on the 25th at 10 a.m. Pacific time. And we will have all new products and all new tips and tricks and fun things to share with you. So now that we have all the housekeeping out of the way, I'm going to turn the time over to Donna and Naomi for the great presentation. Donna. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to January So Fun 2022. I'm Donna, and this is... Hi, I'm Naomi, and it's, uh, it's January 2022. Can you believe it? When I was doing my live in-person uh, So Fun earlier this month, I was telling them that the last time I was in person was pre-COVID, and so it was January of 2020. So it was two years that I've been doing online, and it's just crazy to think like where all that time went. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about today is some of the notions we brought in. And the first notion I wanna show you is, I'm sure we all know what one of these is or have seen one, it's called a clothing brush, and it is great to get that lint and hair and of course thread off of your shirts and your clothing. I have three dogs, so this comes in handy. I just pop this in my purse and it's a cute little uh, add-on. The next item is going to be the, it's long, it's called the Fuse in View Ironing Board Mat. So this right here, and hopefully you can see it all, it's massive. It covers your whole ironing board. This is great for applique, but honestly, just having it to protect my ironing board is one of my favorite features. I've looked at my ironing board over the years and gone, ooh, I should replace that or I should wash that. And what do we do? We, we forget and then months pass and then we're, we say it again to ourselves. So when I got this, I made sure and I put a new ironing board cover on and now I'm covering it with this to protect it because it was a little scary. <laughs> and so with this, what I do is if I have a quilt and I'm applicating something, I'll put my quilt down and then I put my applique piece on and then this goes right over it and then I can iron it, I can see through it, so I'm making sure that nothing is shifting or moving around. It has a nice grippy texture to it, uh, so it's great for pressing, and uh, it's a great thing to help keep my ironing board clean. Also, I'm briefly gonna go over the next one. We brought in some King Tut thread, and the first one is called Desert Dawn, and this is kind of the orangey yellow color and it's variegated thread. The next one is my personal favorite, Water Lily. And this is our kind of purple lilac color. And then we have our red color, Gypsy Rose. And uh, later on I will show you, because we brought in an embroidery CD, and I'll point out to you 
um, where these threads are on that design. And let's see, oh, my another great thing. So I do a lot of embroidery and I make a lot of patches. So we brought in this poly patch twill and it comes in a variation of colors. There's two different packs. There's a uniform and athletic pack and they're nine by 24 inches, I believe. Yes. And uh, like I said, a lot of great colors. It's not iron on, so you do have to sew it on or you can put some material on the back to make it an iron on. But what I love about this product is that it really helps when you make a patch, you don't have that puckering look. So later in this video, I'm gonna do a demo on my embroidery machine on how I like to make patches. And then the last thing I'm gonna go over before I pass it over to Donna is purple tape. Purple tape, it reminds me of the pink embroidery tape, uh, washi tape, painter's tape, but I like this one because it's a little bit wider so it can really help secure those items down. I mainly use it on my scanning cut on the corners when I hold down my material so those corners don't curl up. Um, another thing is if you're doing applique embroidery, then you can tape your uh, fabric down and it will do the tack down stitch right over the tape and then you just rip the tape and it just comes right off but it keeps it nice and secure. And I'm going to pass it to Donna now. Next we have uh, the Stripology ruler and it's a complement to our Stripology Mixology 2 book this month. And this features half inch um, slices that you can use for your rotary cutter to create all kinds of different uh, pre-cuts. You can do two and a half inch, you could do uh, layer cakes, you could do five inch charm squares out of the fabric that you already own. But the Stripology ruler is also great um, and will show how it's used from the book uh, to do uh, interesting angles, um, and what I like about it the best is its maximum cutting size is 12 and a half inches. So you can square up a 12 and a half inch block by cutting through these two channels and then rotating it and squaring up your other block. So you don't have to have a square up ruler for every size uh, project. Because it's a um, Creative Grids product. It comes with complete instructions. So even if you're not using it for stripology, you can have info that shows you how it works. Now the next three items we have have to do with garment making, although they can they can uh, run into quilting uh, different types of sewing that you do. This is called the ham holder. And if you've ever tried to use a ham, you know you have to hold it with one hand and then you have to hold your fabric with one hand and then you don't have a hand left for your iron. So the ham holder will hold your ham at any angle and you can utilize all the different shapes that that ham provides for your sewing. This is especially useful when you're doing the curved seams on a garment, say the sleeves. The second is the Taylor point presser and clapper. So the point presser has a very tapered point there that you can use to press out a collar or the corners of a pillow or someone even suggested that you could get this into a tote bag and actually press out the corners of a boxed bag. And we'll show you this in a little bit. And the, the bottom is a nice size if you're going to use it as a clapper, a clapper being something that you use to press your seams flat. So when you steam the seams of a quilt, the, and you put the clapper down on top of it, the steam rises into the oak and then travels back down into your fabric. And it helps hold that press, because as you work through your quilt, 
those seams to see, seem to bloom again. So if you, you use the weight and the, the oak um, material, then it gives you a really flat, open seam. And finally, if you need a little bit smaller clapper, we have this one. It's got these nice finger grooves carved in it, and it acts the same way, all oak, the steam travels up and, and back down into your fabric. And it's just the perfect size to do um, a quilt block. And you should be pressing your quilt blocks as you go and not try and press them after they're already all put together. So that's the small wooden clapper. So I'm gonna move on to our garment this month. We have two, Naomi's made one and I've made one. This is the Sewing Workshop Chateau Coat. And this is a dolman sleeve um, relaxed fit item that is reminds me of the, the 50s and the 60s. In fact, I was sewing on these and binging on Perry Mason um, over Christmas. And I swear I saw Della Street in something just pretty much like this. It's designed to be used with a, a non-raveling fabric like a wool melton or a, a boiled wool or a fleece. But it also gives you instructions on how to um, finish the edges if you do have fabric that ravels. So the first one I made is this one. And because it does ravel, I opted to put the patch pockets on instead of the, the slash pockets. And then I have just finished all the seams with a knit fabric. And I'm gonna do a demo in a little bit to show you how easy it is to finish the seams of this jacket so that none of the raveling shows or um, uh, makes a mess. This is in fact a knit, but I didn't have a knit fabric to do this jacket. And this of course is a, a wool that looks the same on both sides. So I didn't have to make a facing. So this is just uh, a binding that I made on the bias out of quilting cotton. And it's supposed to be an open front, but I decided if I wear this over like a puffy vest or a sweatshirt, I do want to be able to close it. And so I've just added a snap and a big decorative button. All the seams on the inside are also finished. And this one has the binding on the edge, and so every seam is protected. So now we're gonna turn it over to Naomi and she's gonna show you her garments. Hello, okay. So with the garment I brought in, it is called the square neck top. And it goes in sizes, uh, it comes in sizes from extra small to seven X and turn over so you can see the back. So you have a lot of great options and sizes here. It's interesting because this picture right here is the same material. <laughs> so with this one, this pattern comes in two options. It comes in a woven option and a knit option. And so with the knit option, you don't have to sew darts, which is great. So if you don't wanna sew those darts, Maybe you don't like them for some reason, you can do this version. Um, I will say it's been a little bit since I've sewn with knit, so it was a little challenging, but uh, I worked through it. I, I surged all my seams. This pattern also has the option where you can adjust your square neck depth and width. So depending on um, how deep you want it, you can adjust that. And then the woven version, like I said, you have the darts here. 
and it is a crop style, but you can add length to it very easily, as you see right here. And it has this dolman sleeve. And this is just a fun, uh, easy t-shirt if you want to expand maybe you're a beginner sewer and you want to kind of step to the next level. This is a great continuing to advance your apparel sewing. And now I'm going to pass it back to Donna and she is going to show you her demo. So I mentioned the fact that the pattern shows you how to make a knit binding. And when I say knit in today's world, that could be a two-way stretch or a four-way stretch. This happens to be mostly a two-way stretch. It's a lycra. It's got a little bit of an alligator pattern to it. And I've just cut strips off and made my own binding. And they're an inch and a quarter wide, and I'm stitching it on this very ravelly silk blend, right sides together, and you're just going to line up those raw edges. And don't pull it tight. Just lay it on there one to one. And see how it just travels around that curve so nicely because of the stretch. If you were using a quilting cotton, then you would want to use a bias cut. So there's your quarter of an inch seam. And the next thing you do is just fold this back and wrap it around of course in real life I would probably put a few pins in here and then you're going to stitch in the ditch to pick thread that matches but here our thread is blue so you can see where the stitching is and there you've protected that seam you can see how crooked I sewed and then on the back side you can either trim this to within about an eighth of an inch of that stitching or in the case of a facing or a hem you don't have to trim it at all the knit lycra is not going to ravel. And that gives you that really nice finished edge. I do recommend you do this stitching here with an open toe foot because it's really hard to see where your stitching is going. So we had a question as to where you got the fabric for that jacket. <laughs> I was given this fabric by our South End educator. Gail Michalashonis, and she gave me a whole roll of it. She had made whatever she wanted from it and was um, downsizing, and so I said, yeah, I'll take it. I can't tell you um, the age or the origin other than I just was given it. Uh, she gave it to me, so thanks for asking. <laughs> now back over to Naomi. Okay, so oh. the, next thing, the next thing we're going to talk about is our embroidery CD, and it is by OESD, and it's called Doodle Stitches, and it has 22 embroidery designs on it, and I'll flip it over, and I'm going to let Donna talk about it first, and here, you can compare. Sentence. Okay. All right. Uh, Naomi's actually going to get set up to do a demo with these stitches and the patch material that we have this month. 
So the doodle stitches uh, are a combination of applique, these five are applique stitches, and then the rest are thread work. And then there are some black and white um, sentiment uh, designs that have all kinds of good feelings uh, if you stitch them on your, your work. So I'm going to start with my cautionary tale of don't do as I do because it didn't work. Um, this is a pre-made placemat, and I just love the little hearts. It is an applique, so they have three different fabrics in those satin stitch hearts. And I was so proud of myself getting this on my screen, uh, replicated three times, all lined up and ready to stitch. And as I started working, my needle gummed up so bad. My guess is that these pre-made placemats have so much fusible in them to keep them flat that it just, it just caught on my needle. After three, four, five hundred stitches, the thread would break. When I finally diagnosed the problem, I sat there with a bottle of alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol, <laughs> and, uh, and a Q-tip, and I just watched the needle go up and down, up and down, and when it got gummy, then I cleaned it off. Um, but it's still, the, knee, the thread broke over and over and over again. So I'm telling you right now, don't use this placemat unless you want a headache, uh, or unless you want to take and put a button every place there's a mistake. So that's my new cat food mat or whatever. I, I don't know. I haven't got a clue what I'm going to do with that. Um, some of the other designs from the uh, CD are these cute little stemmed flowers. There's the apron. That's just an apron blank and an additional flower pattern. This is an example of the thread colors. So this is Desert Dawn, this yellow frame. Water Lily is the butterflies. And a Gypsy Rose is the sentiment. So very blessed. Now, granted, this is a very busy design and probably shouldn't have been stitched out in three colors. So let me show you what these look like when they're just high contrast, one color, white on black. And Naomi did this, and it really does highlight the beautiful stitches and the words. And then I've done the same one in a purple rayon thread and then turned it into this pillow, bringing out the colors of my watercolor pens that I colored this in with in the quilting cotton. And then just finish this off with an envelope opening and a couple buttons to slide your pillow into. And then stitch this five eighths of an inch frame around the outside edge. And then finally, I did one of the big flower power designs in a couple different colors and applied them to this picture frame. And this is just a frame that I got on clearance and I painted in black chalk paint the canvas so it would match the felt that is the backing for these three panels. This says, how does your garden grow? So that now is interchangeable for any season. Okay, Naomi, are you ready with your demo? Yes, I'm ready. Okay. However you want. Okay, so actually, um, 
I like how she was talking about gummy. And now I'm seeing an envision like I feel like I should go home and take a picture of like a gummy bear underneath the needle like <laughs> and send it to her. <laughs> so sorry, that's how I get. I get very distracted. So the first couple things I want to talk about are I made some patches out of Yep. I made some patches out of some of the embroidery designs. And these are some of the designs that were on that CD. And you can see, and then I use the patch material. And all you have to do is trim some loose threads when you're done. So here's one. And then there's another one. And then love you to the moon and back. And I'm going to show you how I like to do it because this is, I want, I made one to show you what not to do. So this heart one, if you look at the edges here, you can kind of see there's stabilizer and you don't want that. So I'm going to show you how I like to get it so that the stabilizer, so that there's none of that showing through. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have my hoop. And I'm going to take a topper material, either an iron away or wash away, or even like a badge master material. And I'm going to hoop it up and I will load it in my machine. And then we are going to take a look at my screen. Okay, so I have my screen here and what we're gonna do Oh, and I just noticed something, and I will have Lori grab it for me. Um, I need a, a foot, a different foot for this machine. Oh, you have a foot? Yeah. Okay. So while she's getting me the foot, I can talk about how you set it up. So we're going to go to embroidery. And then I'm just going to go on here, and I'm going to find a design. And I don't want a design that's going to take forever to stitch out. So where did I find one? I was looking earlier briefly, so... There are so many designs and I just want something tiny. There we go. So that design right there doesn't, won't take very long to stitch out. So I'm gonna click on set. Now this is the part where you are going to add in the applique feature. You're gonna add in that satin stitch that's gonna go around it. So you will get this stitch right here. Don't you love that metallic gold thread? So then we're going to go up here to edit. And then on this screen, you're going to find this little shield. It looks, it reminds me of a night shield. It has a little crown on it. And if you push that, it's then going to have your design and it will automatically have a satin stitch around it. So then you can increase or decrease your distance of the satin stitch. So I'm just going to leave it where it is. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click Embroidery. So now at this point, it's going to kind of show you all the stitches. It's going to have your design. And then it's going to have three kind of applique stitching. The first stitch is a placement stitch, and then the second is a tack down stitch, and then the last one is your satin stitch. So I am going to pass it back to Donna while I get this foot on, and then I will come back and do this for you. Our next item is the insulated lunchbox um, by June Taylor. And if you've ever worked with one of her uh, quilt as you go patterns, they couldn't be easier. This comes with full instructions on how to make the boxed corners of this lunch bag quilt it, and finish it with this zipper. So this is Naomi's. And once you get done, this bag is completely finished on the inside. So there's no raveling. 
here are the supplies that you get. You get some twill tape that you're going to cover with your own fabric. You get a plastic sheet that goes in the bottom of the bag to give the bag some stability. You get the pre-marked uh, batting, and in this case it's a, it's a insole bright type batting that's infused with the foil to make it an insulated bag. And you get what they refer to as the zippity do done zipper. And this is a very clever idea. You don't need a zipper foot because the zipper is already installed and it opens up on either side of the zipper and you just insert your pre-quilted bag inside that opening and then just stitch the full length of your zipper. You're gonna cut those off after you stitch your bag together. You're gonna box those corners and here would be a perfect way to use the point presser by getting in those corners and pressing that seam nice and solid. And then when you're done, you have an insulated lunch tote that's very roomy, big enough to hold a frozen lunch if you're not a sandwich person. And you have done your zipper in no time flat. Naomi, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. You know, let me say real quick about that lunch box. Another great thing you can do is on the inside, you can coat it with the waterproof material so you can easily just wipe it out. So that's something to think of, you know, to maybe plan ahead before you do it. But it's a great opportunity to help just keep it clean. So, okay, now we're all set up. You know, nothing like live TV, right? <laughs> so I have my hoop in here. I have my material. I have my design here. So the big thing I like to do different, and this is just how I like to do it. There's a million different ways. I, it'll have you stitch the design first, but I don't like to stitch the design first because I find that if you stitch the design first, sometimes it will make the material kind of do like this wavy look and that annoys me and that creates puckering and it's just, you want a nice flat patch. So what I do is I skip over the design and I do all of my, uh, these stitches first and then I come back and I do my design at the end. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push this minus and plus button and right up here there's arrows and I'm gonna go down one and it's gonna go to that first placement stitch. So then I'm gonna click okay and then I am good. I can push the start button and it is going to do my placement stitch so I know where to put my material. So I'm gonna let it do that. So now that part is done. So then if I was home, what I would do is I would spray a little bit of 505 temporary spray on this and then I would stick it down, but I'm just gonna hold it down while it does the stitch out. It's gone on to the next tack down stitch. So then I'm gonna hit start and I'm just gonna hold it, but kind of out of the way. When I select this, this design like I thought it was smaller and it's bigger than what I thought it would be but you know what there's I tried to pick something that didn't have too many hard weird corners for me to cut out okay so now it is done and it's gonna do its little dance okay so then I'm just gonna take my hoop out and now I'm going to trim. If you had a scanning cut, you could cut this uh, before you do this. 
that is usually what I do and I recommend because I'm telling you, nothing like trying to trim something down when there's like several people watching you. The stress is on. <laughs> so I'm just going to trim around this. The, the great, another great feature about this um, applique option on the machines is I love how it has this built-in um, tack, you know, placement stitch, tack down stitch. And then when it does the satin stitch, it's actually a nice size satin stitch because I don't like satin stitches that are super narrow. I find that it, um, it's harder to cover all the little edges of the fabric because it really annoys me when the, um, the fibers of the fabric pop through on a patch or an applique. And so I'm sorry, I'm going as quick as I can. And so that is a good little feature. We're getting closer. Almost done. Oh, yes. Someone was asking what kind of fabric you're using. Okay. So I brought up the two selections. Excellent. Thank you. So the material, so the question is, what type of material am I using for this patch? And I am using the poly patch twill we brought in. And I will show it to you in just a minute. Come in. So I'm not going to say I cut a beautiful, I didn't cut it super beautiful, but it's cut. We're going to just do it. So I'll put it back in, lock it in, and then the next step is the satin stitch. So I'm going to push the button and let it do its satin stitch, and I'll show you this. So first it's going to go around and it's going to do a zigzag stitch, and I'm sorry, I didn't cut it awesome, um, but it's going to do the zigzag stitch all the way around, and then I'll come back and do the satin stitch. The poly patch twill. So this is the uniform and it comes in more of your, um, I think of my husband's uniforms that he wears for work. Browns, tans, green, black, grays. And this is all nine by 24 inches. And then this one is athletic. And these are your fun, bright colors, orange, white, purple, green, yellow, blue, red. So a lot of great, fun colors. You know, I find that I do a lot of patches, but if you're newer to making patches and you don't want to invest in buying a larger cut of material, this gives you a nice variety. And remember I said it's not iron-on, but you can always put some stuff on it to make it iron-on. And so while this is stitching out, we are going to talk about the book, right? Do you want to show your I already did. Okay. Yep. All right. I'm going to uh, announce door prize. Ooh, door prize. This is a J. J Lee pajama pattern, and it is going to Susan Moe. And if you would private message us on Facebook, we'll get this to the closest quality store for you to pick up. Next, we're going to talk about one of the books we worked on. This is called The Stripology Mixology 2. Some of you may have done Mixo or Stripology 1. This is a fun book because it's not only got 13 beautiful, easy to make quilts, but it has 13 cocktail recipes to have for a job well done. The photography is beautiful, and I have never pieced more accurately than I did out of this book. It's, it's just phenomenal how, for once, I followed the instructions, which was important because um, the pieces just came together so accurately. My first quilt is called Field of Flowers, and it's 20 charm squares, five and a half inch or five inch charm squares finished. And the prints are just funky and modern. And so I put them on a field of this dark blue. 
with assorted green stems that I um, found in my collection of fabrics. You cut the background for these stems on a real weird angle. And she shows you exactly how to do that with the stripology ruler, how to tip your angle just right so that you get this angle for 20 stems. So you've got 10 going this way and 10 going that way. And that's where precision comes into play. And I got all of my stems, my background and stems cut out except for the last two. And of course, wouldn't you know it, I put the stripology ruler down incorrectly. So I had to do some piecing on the background fabric. But for some reason, this fabric, you can't see any of the, you can't even see the block really. The seams have just disappeared, lucky for me. And then um, I sent it out to the quilter and she did a real soft, funky uh, triangle that circles about uh, uh, back on itself. And then the, the leftover charm squares went on the back. And I like to say this fabric here is one of those, why did you ever buy that? But it found a home and it seems to be real happy now. The second quilt is called Wanda, and it's actually the quilt that's featured on the front of the book. There's being fall colors. I chose to, chose to do these in the colors of these succulent charm squares. You take the charm squares that you want in the center of the block and then following her instructions with the uh, stripology ruler, you cut these sections out and then construct each block precisely. And it's like a crazy quilt. You could, you could use this pattern as a crazy quilt to do some decorative stitches from your machine. But I just like the way it twists and turns and all the colors mix up. I put them on a grunge with a light green wash. And this fabric was from uh, the quality store here in Tukwila. And then finished it off with this uh, decorative inner uh, accent strip and the border is the same succulent pattern. Quilted in a rose design, but it sort of echoes the succulent uh, flowers that you see and plants. And here was my goal of using as many um, extra fabrics that I had around in my collection. And then finally, this is called Milky Way. And it was a holiday Christmas type jelly roll with some light and some dark fabrics. So I isolated all of the dark fabrics, set the light ones aside. I didn't want any light fabrics to run into those stars. I wanted the stars to really pop out of the quilt. So it's a combination of the jelly roll and some fabrics I had on hand. And again, the precision in this quilt is phenomenal. Um, I just want to show you how her instructions work. This comes out in one size, and it would be a perfect Quilts of Valor. One customer is asking, do you have any idea about how long it took you to create that quilt? How long did it take me to create that quilt? 
Um, let me say about a week, but that's not full-time work. Um, here, here is the layout, and it's, it's simple, but you need to be really organized. So I cut strips anywhere from four and a half to six and a half, all the way up to 24 and a half. But they have to be placed like a jigsaw puzzle. They fit specifically in one place in the quilt. So for the first time, I labeled all my strips. She has a system here. It's like A through J. And you just lay them down on the floor. And then after you make sure that all the strips fit, you start sewing your rows together. And it was a very rewarding quilt um, when, once I got done. I put a little um, lighter flange here to break up the too dark, the body and the border. The border is a striped fabric, which I didn't want to try and match those stripes. So I've inserted little pieces from this fabric on all four sides just to reduce the stress of sewing and unsewing because I wanted those border pieces to be perfect. And then I did purchase the 108-inch grunge polka dot from here at the Tuck Willis store for my backing fabric. And my quilter's done a beautiful swirl and star pattern in kind of a gold thread. Okay, Naomi's going to talk about stripology now. Excellent, thank you. Did you already point out the top of it? The section here? No. Okay, I'll talk. About it. Okay, so another great feature about this book is when you turn to a pattern, let's just find a random one that hopefully has a lot of options. Okay, so in this pattern, it, for all the patterns, at the top corner, it'll say, like, this has two and a half inch strips. So you can use two and a half inch strips uh, pre-cuts or, pre or you can cut your own with your stripology ruler. It also has the three circles with check marks, and each check mark is a different difficulty level. So one check is beginner, two um, intermediate, three advance. And then she also has right here recommended rulers. So you can use the Stripology Extra Large or the strip, Stripology Squared ruler. And there are three uh, rulers out there. Uh, the one we have is the Extra Large. And so just want to point that out because that has a lot of great information there. The first one I'm going to talk about, this one's called Sammy. And Sammy consists of four blocks. And the block is this piece right here. And so pretty much all you do is you make the same block, but then you change the location of this little strip. And then you make sure to put them where it's never in the same spot. And then I use, this was a layer cake I got from Quality Sewing and Vacuum, and I cut it apart. I, I quilted it on my long arm with this uh, triplet design, and then I used a blue minky on the back, and it is very cuddly and soft and wonderful. And I ended up doing the design a lot bigger just because I wanted it loosely quilted. It's going to be worn a, or on the, a bed a lot, washed a lot. So I just, I don't need dents for this quilt. And then the next one is right here. And this one is called Angler's Choice. And Angler's Choice is this gorgeous mustard quilt. And this one is an intermediate level, but honestly, the only thing I found intermediate about it was right here on this block. When you sew this together, 
you're going to do what's called a partial seam. And so you're going to start sewing right here. You're going to sew down, over, up, and then back over to this point. And then you're going to flip your fabric back over, and then you're going to sew back down, meeting up with the seam that you started. And then when you open it, it's all going to lay flat. There's not going to be any um, bumps or what I like to call fullness where it kind of bulges out a little bit. So it makes it lay nice and flat. Um, I use scrap materials I had, and I did this kind of whirlwind design I quilted. And then for my binding, I pieced together all my scraps. And you know me, I got to put minky on the back. So I did this off-white minky. And I just love how you can really see the quilting on minky. It just pops out. And if anyone asks, yes, I do use batting still um, on my minky. I find that it just helps add a stabilizer feature to it to help with the stretchiness. And then the other one in that book that I did, this one's called Honey. And this one consists of, if you have like a jelly roll that you have extra leftover pieces from, all you need is seven strips. And that will make this uh, top insert and then you have your accent color you add your border and a couple squares but seven strips that's all and then i quilted it with this uh fourth of july or not fourth of july wrong holiday naomi <laughs> saint patrick day um four leaf clover design so you can kind of zoom in there i feel like don and i were kind of doing themed like projects you know we're doing different holidays and it's nice to do that and then the back, I did, I pulled a Donna. I pieced my back together. I used just some of my scraps. And I'm going to take you over to the demo table and I'm, we're going to continue with the embroidery, but I'm also going to show you how I use the stripology ruler. So let's walk over here. Okay, so it has done its satin stitch as you can see but now we need to do the design and so we're going to look at the screen and it's going to say it's finished embroidering but it's not we're not done click ok and then it automatically will take it back to the top um, of the list which is your design and we're just going to hit start and it'll stitch out that inside area and we're just all doing same color keep it easy now let's just stare at that for a minute. in the machine what am I using to stabilize right here so I currently have just like a iron away topper you can use an iron away topper a wash away or you can use badge master I will say for the items that are thinner like the wash away I would use two layers but I'm using iron away currently and let me show you And then also the machine I have is the Baby Lock um, Solaris. Yep, the Baby Lock Solaris. And it's a fun little machine. But I will say in the edit menu when we we're over on the screen, as long as it has that little um, night shield with the crown, you can do this. So as long as your embroidery machine has that on the Baby Lock or the Brother, you can do that. So then I've got my design and once again, I'll apologize for my 
quickly horrible cutting. So all you do is, are you ready? You just pop it out, whichever way it goes like that. And then all you have to do is just trim any of these little threads that are sticking out and you have, and then if you want to sew it on, you can sew it on or you can put some uh, iron on stuff. But if you are doing iron on, I would iron away this iron on stuff first, but I just sew it on. It works great. So that is that patch now. And let me know if there's any questions as they come in. Yep. And Donna's going to show you something real quick. Uh, one of the advantages um, also about this book, and you know, Naomi, I didn't pay any attention to that strip on the top. Oh. Of course, I don't, you know, I want a picture, not words. Um, but let me show you the, the graph that comes. This is Honey, the last quilt that Naomi showed you. And the advantage to this book is she's got all of your... your um, fabric requirements, and then the possible different sizes you can make. Topper, a square, lap, queen, and king size quilt. Some of them don't go up to king, but many of them have all those different sizes, except for the Milky Way only comes in one size. Um, so that's another advantage to this book. And Naomi has got the Stripology ruler set up and she's going to show you how easy that works. Yes. Okay. So first let me just go review. So on the ruler, we have stars and squares. From star to star, you get an inch and a half. From square to square, you get two and a half inches. So they have these little permanent marking points for you. Now, if you need a, a little extra help, sometimes I'll use like those bright, um, colorful arrow stickers or, you know, just so it helps my eye catch it. And then right here, there's this dotted line and that is where I place my fabric and I can square it up. So I am going to I just pick I just pick a line right here so this is my fold here at the top and I just pick a line to kind of line it up with that top of the fabric and then right here I have my fabric going over the zero so I can square it up so I'm going to first and hopefully I brought my sharp rotary cutter so I have that cut and now I'm going to do two and a half inch squares. So remember, square to square. So I'm going to go two and a half. So all you do is you slide it in and you cut it. And then I'm going to go to five. And then seven and a half. And ten. And then I would go to 12 and a half, my mat's a little short. So I'm just gonna do that. And then I will slide it so it doesn't stick to my mat. Here's my piece to square it up. And then here are my two and a half inch strips. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how I like to make my five inch squares. So I take another piece of fabric. And I just lay it there. And I'm just going to line it up here at the top and scoot it over here. There we go. Okay. So then, and I've done probably four, four or five layers of fabric in this, no problem. It's all about making sure you have a sharp uh, rotary blade. <laughs> so I'm going to just cut the zero to make sure it's square. And then I'm going to go to five inches. that and then I'm going to go to 10 inches okay so then I slide that and I'll just take out my excess pieces I'm going to turn my mat and then I'm going to line it up at the top Okay, yep. 
And I want to make sure I square this up again because this side right here is where my fold is. So I want to cut that off. So I am going to just go there. So there is, it's cut off, then I'm going to go to five. And then I'm going to go to 10. Okay. And I just love the little uh, gaps right here because you can really just slide your, your blade right in there, no problem. So then I pull that off. I'm gonna get rid of my extra. And then you'll see I have all my five inch squares done. And it's that easy. Those are just a couple of the features this ruler has. You know, I'm all about getting rulers that has have multiple functions to them. And this is definitely one of these rulers. So I'm gonna pass it over to Donna and she's gonna talk about the second book. The other book this month is called Trendy Table Three. Many of you have probably already worked out of the first Trendy Table or Trendy Table 2. And I love the way she presents all of her quilts on the side of this barn. So these are all um, table runners, table toppers that are appropriate for 12 months out of the year. And you can go holiday, you can go plain. Let me show you the ones I did. Now, this pattern is, is generic and looks like a French braid, but this is a, a spring and Easter floral background fabric, and then those blenders in the colors that match. Now, a French braid is cut on, a, on an angle and pieced in like this. These are just half square triangles, and depending on which way you turn them, is how you get these chevrons to appear. I've done the back, the background fabric and the binding in the same uh, fabric, and then just use the magic binding two color method to put that little tiny accent purple in there. Now for some reason, I did not get these to match up. They were supposed to be straight across, and I, I don't know what I did wrong. But to camouflage that mistake, I just added a stripe of the background color down through the center. And uh, if I hadn't said anything, maybe you wouldn't have known. And then my other two... My other two runners are the same pattern, but I wanted to show a difference in size and a difference in background. So this is picket fence in both places. I had a Moda grab bag, which is a collection of fabrics that you get from Moda, but you don't get to see what's really in the bag until you get it home. And so these fabrics were all together. And I thought the, the contrast was enough that I could separate them. And I put the hotter, hot pinks and the hot oranges together on this smaller runner with a little textured white background. And this is just a little bit bigger than the book calls for because I wanted to use up all the fabric I had. I did a little bit of channel quilting and then pieced my backing with this uh, fabric again was, why did you ever buy that? But now it's got a home and nobody will see it. And then I wanted to do the same effect only on a dark background. And I had the rest of these uh, two and a half inch strips. Some of them talk about sewing measurements and they have little scissors and sewing paraphernalia, and then the others look like dog ears. Lots and lots of half square triangles that are clipped and fallen all over the floor. 
So this is definitely a theme, uh, sewing themed. Now it's a bed runner. I wanted to use up all of those strips um, and give them a home. And so it ended up being quite long, but it's a lot of fun. Uh, where I pieced this background fabric, I put in a little flange from that pink strip in both places, just as an accent. And to show how really serious I was about using up fabric that I already owned, this backing fabric is like little hot pads or patches. It's definitely a fabric sewing themed um, a piece of fabric and on the salvage it said 1997 so um, I've had that for a long time and now I'm so happy I used it so that brings us to Naomi's runners okay. well first drum roll giveaway so I have this so outdoor living very cute book. I was just going through it going, ooh, I can make that. I can make that, um, you know, in my free time. So our winner for this today is Margaret Douglas. So Margaret Douglas, make sure to go on and let us know which quality you can, you'd like to pick this up from and you will we'll send it to that store. And the, let's see. So my table runners out of the book, thank you. Trendy Table 3, I'm sure Donna talked about it, but I just, I love the illustration in this book. And I think, did we work on the number two? Yes, we did. Donna yeah. and I, I think like three years ago, we did Trendy Table 2, right? Um, and so that, I mean, it was a lot of fun. So I definitely like, like this author and I like how they put everything together. And um, it's all on one one. Uh, page spread yes. of pages yeah it's all I mean it's simple it's it's like two pages is the most there are a couple that have single page but a, a lot of great pictures and the first one I'm gonna go over is right here at the bottom and that one is called twinkly star and twinkly star you know what's what's the hardest thing about stars making sure you don't cut off the points or you don't, you know, make sure you sew, you sew the points correctly. <laughs> and so I was being very cautious and trying my best and I'm very happy with how it turned out. Um, I just, I wanted to have it pop against a nice white fabric and I quilted it with this uh, feather and star look and, and just put a white back on. But this one has lots of half square triangles in it. It's, um, I think it's intermediate, but I really, I say the intermediate thing here is points. I mean, what are we, what are we most concerned about? Making sure we don't sew off those points. The next one right here is called Summertime Picnic. And it consists of a lot of two and a half inch squares and then you make these adorable watermelon wedges at the bottom and the top. And in each of, or in the book, it has a paper template you can print out and then you can cut out those pieces. I actually, I, I made a decision. I was like, I'm not going to applique the black little seeds on here. I was like, I'll embroider them on. And then I put it on my long arm and I started quilting and realized I forgot to put the seeds on there. So then I'm like, okay, I'll put black, I'll cut out black glitter vinyl, heat transfer vinyl and put it on there. And then it was like, bam, it's so fun day. And we had to just get going. So I'm happy even without it. People were saying, oh, it's a seedless watermelon. You don't need seeds. And so then I quilted it with this fun watermelon design and on the back, I have watermelon fabric. And I kind of continued going. I made two placemats that match. I just took this bottom section here and added a border around it to finish it off. And it has the same backing. And then, you know, following the trend of picket fence, you know, we, we both need to do some picket fence. And <laughs> 
mine is this one. And the big difference here is when I quilted it, I used Warm and Natural and Insulbrite. So it's like a big hot pad for my table now. And I quilted these cute, and hopefully you can see it, these cute butterflies and flowers with this blue grunge fabric on the back. And I'm happy how it turned out. I think the picket fence was really easy. You know, it's, you get your uh, five pieces of fabric, you sew them together, and then you subcut them. And then you pretty much just insert another piece right here between them. And then you add your border as you need it. But um, yeah, it goes together very easy. And so I am going to hand you back over to Donna. We're gonna talk about our last pattern. Naomi and I wanted to do a pattern that involved feature prints. So a, a printed fabric with the design so large that it's just a shame to cut into it. So we picked out windows. This is an Amanda Murphy pattern. And she gives you some great ideas for color choices. 12 blocks. And the piecing couldn't be simpler once you figure out um, the cuts. So this is the, the total block, uh, 12 blocks, as it's being put together with its sashing. And then it does have an optional border at the top and the bottom. The block consists of this block added to a background color and sewn to the short end of the feature block. And then you construct this block and, edit, and add it to the long end. And then one more background strip. You've got 12 blocks. And as Naomi said, the hardest part was following the pattern design, twisting and turning that block to get it the way she's designed it. Now, the pattern calls for shot cotton. And I went literal on that. This is literally shot cotton by definition out of the dictionary. And what shot cotton means is the warp is one color, the weft is another. And other fabrics that are shot cotton are chambray or denim. Um, there's any number of heavier weight twill type fabrics in the industry that are shot cotton. Mine happens to be a K facet shot cotton, which is very, very lightweight. But because of those two threads changing, my quilt it is, is two colors. The background, some places it's very purple and other places it's teal. And you can see it change depending on which direction the block has been positioned. So I've cut my 12 feature blocks out of fabric called Garden State of Mind. And then she recommends that you do six different frames around that feature block and I only picked out four colors. And then I chose to left, leave the top and the bottom off. I thought this was a art quilt, but it's a big art quilt. And then I've just quilted it with uh, some wavy lines. And then finally, all the leftover strips I had, I added to the back. Naomi? Can I see the pattern? So, yeah, like Donna was saying, I was very particular about making sure when you have your blocks all laid out and you're assorting them, you're putting them in the right location, you don't let anyone touch this. Because I had a situation where everything was laid out and someone picked this up and when they put it down, they flipped it the wrong way. And then, thankfully, 
I was paying attention and you can, and I was like, hey, what are you doing? Don't touch my stuff. <laughs> so, you know, because that could easily throw you off and you don't want that happening. So I recommend just setting this down, leaving it at the top. Um, take a picture if you need to. I'm big at like, let's take a picture, uh, you know, as we're piecing it along so that we don't mess up. And so for this one, like she was saying, great for if you have prints, large printed fabrics, you can use those up. I went in the direction I called this, this is Kaif, and I'm calling this my Valentine's quilt. And all these gorgeous pinks and his gorgeous flower collection. Uh, I quilted it with this heart design and swirls. And then I pieced the, the binding all together. And so, like she was saying, ours are only different in the way of, I put a border on the top and the bottom and she left the border off. So mine is slightly longer. And then I put a pink minky on the back. And so, you know, you get, you get a nice, with these types of patterns, with these where you can use large prints, you can really, like she was saying, it's an art piece. I mean, you can really have fun with it. You can use those fabrics that you were afraid to cut into. You can fussy cut that specific part of that fabric out that you just love. So with this, you can really get that. Um, and I think, I think we're, that's, yeah. So anything you wanna say before we close out? I just wanna thank everybody for watching today. Um, I hope that you take some of those tips and tricks and try them at home. Um, and otherwise, yeah. So yeah, thank you all for watching and make sure, or just letting you know that this coming Monday is the start of our February So Fun. So that's when we start doing our February in-person shows. So make sure to go on to Quality and get signed up so your name is on that list. So you have a seat when you get to the store. And uh, yeah, thank you all. And I hope you have a great day and hope to see you soon. Bye. Bye.